Right, so, we're back again, a few more developments with the car. Some really good and one we've recently noticed not so good, but it's fixable so it's not too big of an issue. First thing of course is the brakes are now, well the fronts are sorted so far. Uh, the calipers are being fully refurbished and I bought a new seal kit for them as well. Um, so they're all refurbished really. Uh, we've got new, well not new discs, the existing discs, but they've been shop blasted, painted and they're back on now. Both sides, but passenger side isn't covered with anything. The driver side's covered with a, a plastic bag to keep it from the elements. But other development as well, obviously we were under sealing the arches and the sills. The sills are pretty much back on now, at least the trim side of things. So yeah, they're back on now. Um, it's all coming together quite nicely. However, I will show the unfortunate thing. The rear bump is still off, but we decided to take the front one off and we're doing work on the engine today. Uh, but the slight issue at hand is around the corner here, so I'll show you that now. So um, we've taken off the front bumper, as you can see. Uh, everything looks okay, it's not too bad, but the major issue, well, ish, major issue, I think there is major because I don't know what the hell they are, is these things, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're knackered. Um, that one's, that one had to be ground off to get the bolt off, and as you can see, it's basically fell off with corrosion in the process, and this one's knackered as well. The good thing is, this is a detachable part, it can come off and be replaced, it's not like it's part of the shell or anything. Um, but as you can see, it's yeah, they're, they're, they're done for. So we don't know what they're called, but we're going to get an exploder view up and then see where you can get them from and get some new ones on. Uh, other than that, the only other issue which we're going to leave for now is the aircon radiator. There's a few of the fans in there, sort of the, the fins in between. They've sort of, sort, of, sort of fell down, really. It's kind of weird, but that'll probably be replaced at some point, but for now. It should be all right. We haven't even tried the aircon yet, so we were told it works, but time will tell on that one. So one of the things that was knackered with the car when we uh, first got it is the uh, idler pulley and the belt that goes with it. So this is the original one. Well, the one that was currently on the car at the time. I don't think it's original. I hope not. And this is the new one we're putting on, the Gates one. Uh, good make and should last us a good while. Yeah. Hopefully it always lands in the right as well. So that's what's going on. That's what's just came off and that's a new pulley on as well. I haven't really shown off the engine at all, but yeah, it's 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 good. The only issue I've got really is is this crank up here and comes off really easily. And as you can see mine's missing quite a bit of it, so in the future that's going to be getting sorted but for now it's going to have to be left bigger jobs at hand and all so, yeah also the battery will flatten us so we're charging that currently while we're doing other stuff right so that's the uh, belt on after a bit of bit of fettling as you can see though it landed on the side i want it to be i always want it to stay like that the right and up front looks mint anyway so that's that on and obviously the tension pulley itself is all on now so next job is fluids I just started. That's fine. First time I think it's been a little on camera. Good boy. Alright guys, just drain the gearbox oil now. Had the car warming up for a bit. It's coming out now. A little catching oil receptacle. There's a the gearbox oil in now. Pretty black. Been in there clearly a long time. <laughs> yeah, possibly all this life, yeah. And now we are about to clear out the engine oil as well. Which I'm hoping hasn't been in for the same amount of time. <laughs> going through the dipstick, pump it out and then we'll get the remainder out from the bottom through the sun. Pretty self 
efficient after you've pumped it a few times, but you just gotta keep it supervised, keep pumping it, and this little bad boy works its magic. Right, so uh, a slight update with what we've done with the car. Uh, we have drained the engine oil and the gearbox oil. We've already filled up the engine with the new engine oil and we've put the ham oil filter on. Uh, so that's all done, and I'll be getting shot to that in a sec. However, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fill up the gearbox oil. Now, there's a lot of controversy about how you do this because people say you have to have the car perfectly level and you have to fill it up from a certain point, which I'll show you in a minute. And what we're going to do is a lot different to that. We're, we're going to do like the complete opposite of what most people say to some degree. Some people might do this as well, I don't know, but it's what we're going to do. It worked on one type bar, I'm sure it'll work on another. So I'm going to go on now and I'm going to show you where you should fill it up according to other people and where we're going to fill it up from our side of things so obviously we're going to be draining it from this nut here and where you normally fill it up is the nut up the top up here and you have to run a pipe all the way from the top into there in order to fill it up it sounds like a right pain in the arse and of course like I say you've got to parry up the car perfectly level in order to do that however as you can see the car's fairly level, it is up a tiny bit just for the axle stands on the engine side of things. That's all we're going to be using. It's mortal stuff, seems good. What we're going to do this is a nut that we're taking off just there, and you'll see it's open just here, right there. And actually, if I go close enough in a sec, you'll see the gears in there and a synchro as well. We're going to literally fill it up with this big ass funnel straight down to the gears. So factory say 1.9 litres in the gear box. We're putting, but well these are litre bottles, so we're putting two in. Or if you're in the Americans, it's 1.5 US quarts. So there you go. We're putting that in with the big funnel. It's gonna fill up the two litres. Now I don't think 100 mil is really going to make a huge difference. So this is gonna be fine. <laughs> But it's just a method for people who want to change gearbox oil. A lot of people struggle with changing gearbox oil or want to know about changing gearbox oil. So there you go. Once you've drained it from that nut I've shown you, which we're going to do in a sec, this is how you fill it. And also, there it is. There's, there's the giant funnel sticking in where I just showed you. Oh, oh dear. So that's that. So we're gonna let that sit now for about 10 minutes or so, just because obviously the oil is very, very thick, so you've gotta let it go down, and then we'll take that for off, and that'll be it. Gearbox oil is done. For those interested as well, that's the oil we've used for the engine. Castro Edge 530. So if it will use 030 or whatever, we just went for 530. As you can see, the front end's looking a bit different now. I managed to get the grill on, and this is the brand new grill I mentioned way back in the first episode. As you can see, no more algae badge, new front badge is all on now, looking very nice. And then the grill itself is absolutely brand new, straight from Cox or Honda. And it is very, very nice. Front panel here as well is back on and we've got these new clips on. So now all of the clips are on, none of them are broken, they're all brand new. Or are existing ones that weren't broken. So yeah, pretty good. So we've got the new belt there, as mentioned before. And then going around over here, we've got some K&N stickers for the K&N uh, air filter that's in now. Which is much better and I'll, I'll probably end up doing a, a bit of a follow up on that one. In terms of this pipe here, you probably going to notice it's still got some of this green stuff on. I'm not too concerned about getting that cleaned up all that much at the moment because it's going to be getting changed out to a different one soon. Not an HKS or anything like that. Um, I'm sticking to the same system, it's just a better pipe itself. but. More on that probably when the car's more on the road, but yeah. But, uh, engine bay at the minute though, is looking a lot better. Despite the rotter cover. So the next bit now is getting the front bumper on and the arches on the front. Also under here as well, we've got rid of those rotted out weird panels. We've decided to just not bother with them. They don't seem to be really holding anything on. Um, so we're gonna keep them off, maybe just get them at a later date and fit them, just in case. Uh, but we've undersealed and we've put some rust data on and wire wheeled everything up just like we do with the rear. So that's all good under there. Radiator as well, like I say, we're just going to leave it for now. It's, it's not really worth the risk with buying one and these are about 500 quid. So 
I'm just going to leave it as is for now, but as far as it goes from here, it's just a case of getting the front end back together. Also, something worthy of note is the uh, under tray here. It's basically a service panel, and uh, it was hanging off around here, so it was hanging down, which would have created uh, a bit of drag aerodynamic wise and also possibly an MOT advisory it's not really ideal could have caught something on the road as well so it was quite a risk uh, what has is speed clips on the inside and a few of them are missing I think two are missing on mine so we've managed to sort of do a bit of persuading on it and get it in a decent shape again because it was a bit weird in shape and move the speed clips around so it's distributed it a little bit better so as you can see it's a lot straighter a lot more flush now than it was before before like I say it was hanging down quite low here so we're gonna get some more speed clips and get it so it's perfectly flush with the car as it was well from factory really and uh, this panel's all back on as well which needed to be off for the uh, oil change and the clutch uh, fluids being changed as well clutch fluids all done as well actually so the clutch is feeling pretty good so the question will tell well the question to find out now is whether it needs a new one or not but we'll find out in time Right, I think this seems like an appropriate time to end, especially with the wind. Uh, so that's everything back around the front end, uh, the bumper, the arches on the front, drivers and passenger side, and obviously the engine bays look a lot better now. Um, yeah, looks way better. So yeah, we'll put on some uh, some G3 to cut the paintwork a bit, buff out a few scratches that are there. Obviously the stone chips, the, well they're just there to stay to be fair. And we've put on some um, some soft 99 as well, just give it a little bit of a shine. But it's it's come along nicely. Obviously, the new grill is definitely definitely really nice. Uh, still a bit more to do on the engine as well, but again, that'll all be recorded. So we'll see where it goes from there. Right, thanks for watching, and uh, see you in the next one. Well, you probably noticed behind us, uh, it's missing the Honda badge.